Hello everyone, my name is Eduardo Sorto. I'm a mechanical engineer here at Ceratech. And today I'm going to be showing how you can use reference sets to capture a machined part configuration and a final assembled part configuration. So we are going to be working with this you know, simple assembly here, just a spar web and spar cord assembly. And so the goal is to create this model of the spark cord that captures the machined part configuration that includes a pilot hole on each end to help facilitate the assembly process. So this spark cord is going to be machined with those two pilot holes. The spar is going to be machined with the um, corresponding pilot holes and um, they'll have their own separate final assembly configuration that captures the match drilled holes uh, between the two interfaces. So let's go ahead and get started with this spark cord here. So the first thing we want to do is to duplicate this body. So we want to create a um, extracted body here so we can have two, one dedicated to the uh, machine part, the other one dedicated to the assembled part. So the first thing we want to do is go to our um, extract geometry feature. We'll select body and we want to fix this at the current time step. Yeah. So to keep ourselves Selves organized. Let's assign the first uh, original part or original body as the machined part reference set. And this new extracted body as the assembled reference set. Okay. So let's first work with the machine part. So I hid the extracted body so we could just focus on this. And so we just want to create pilot holes on uh, the ends here. So I'll define the diameter of the pilot hole to be half a millimeter. I'll do a hard selection on uh, this point here. I'm grabbing the wrong thing. Point of point set. Uh, there you go. Okay, now do the same thing on the other side here. Great. Um, I can reduce the depth just to a millimeter here. And when you're going through your Boolean operation, you just want to make sure you're grabbing the correct body. Sometimes um, you know, you can accidentally grab the extracted body and you'll have a dependency issue there. So we'll just unselect there and you know, make sure we're hard selecting this machine part there. Okay, so you can see those um, pilot holes now are in this part. So um, let's stay organized and rename this to pilot holes. Okay, so now we want to define the match drilled holes on this body. Okay, and we'll select our point set, the entire point set here. Change our diameter to one and a half. And again, we just want to make sure we're selecting the correct body. And so we can see the, the final holes there. Okay, so let's go ahead and show this. So you can see they're both overlaid on one another. So um, a quick tip here to stay organized is to define each body to its own dedicated layer. So let's move this machine part to layer two. And let's move the assembled part to layer three.
Okay, so now we can just toggle back and forth. Makes it a little bit easier to you know, um, interrogate our model. Okay, so now the next step is to assign these two bodies to our reference sets. So we can go to assemblies, more reference sets. And these are the three default references in NX. So we'll uh, let's go ahead and modify this model to say assembly or assemble. Let's create another one that captures the machined um, configuration. So for the object, we want the machine body. And uh, assembled, we want to make sure we're grabbing the correct body there. Okay, and so now we can go ahead and save this, and then we can take a look at the next level assembly and um, take a look at our changes. So if we go to our assembly navigator, and we right click our spark cord part here. We have the option to replace our different reference sets. So we can go to the assembled reference set to show those, um, you know, the match drilled holes there, how it's the final um, um, part's going to look like. But if we want to, we can also see how it's going to be machined, right, with those pilot holes there. So um, the same process is going to happen on the spar web here. Um, we can you know, showcase how we can um, reference linked points to create these holes on here. That's a topic for a different video. Um, I do want to show how reference sets work in a drawing, so I'll toggle to that. So let's go ahead and create a new drawing. Um, uh, let's see, let's have this be in the part level here. Okay. Okay, so these are our default parameters here. We can just skip through those. Um, and let's see if we can bring in our view. But before we bring in our view, let's just uh, make sure all our layers are being displayed. Okay. Then we want to define the reference set of that part. So at the moment, it has the assembled reference set. Um, but we want to create a drawing of the machined reference set, again, to capture those pilot holes. So let's go back. Let's bring in the view. Um, let's check our, our layer settings. Make sure um, uh, layer two is turned on. Okay. And then we can see the arc part come in. Um, we could just leave this for now. Just for the purposes of the demo, we can see that this uh, reference set is being shown. We can also show the assemble reference set if we want. So go ahead and update that. All right, so you can bring those both in. Okay, so that's how reference sets work in a drawing level, and we went through how reference sets work in an assembly level. So um, you know, reference sets are a very useful feature. Be, it can be very powerful if you're trying to communicate different types of um, configurations, one to capture uh, you know, the manufacturing process and another one to capture the assembly process. So just a couple of quick tips here that you can use um, for your uh, engineering designs and processes. Thanks for checking out our channel. If you like what you saw, make sure to like and subscribe down below so you don't miss out on any new videos. Follow us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter for the latest engineering news and information. And to see all of our upcoming events, please visit our website at saratech.com events.